most people see death as something on TV. Nice old lady dying quietly in the hospital and death is not like that. It's violent, it's ugly, and it's nasty. My worst nightmare was having to bury one of my kids. Over two and a half million people die in the US every year. Tight budgets mean less than 8% of these fatalities get an autopsy. We had so many questions of what could have happened to her. But if you question the verdict, who can you call? 1-800 autopsy is almost like a McDonald's. Everybody knows what it is. Families come to me because they're desperate. The shocking death of a 24-year-old girl. I saw my sister's feet hanging. But was it suicide or foul play? Very rare does a woman hang herself. The body has the answer. You need to actually get in there and get your hands dirty. It takes specialist forensic investigation. She's got some interesting abrasions on her right shoulder. I was curious about these marks. Rigorous scientific analysis. If somebody hit her in the head, there would be a bruise inside. And decades of experience. This is the first one in 30 years I've ever seen. For the experts to determine the cause of death. Obviously, this individual planned it. She died within seconds. If somebody did this to her, we want answers. Now, the family finally learns the truth. Based in East Los Angeles, 1-800-AUTOPSY is America's go-to company for privately conducted post-mortem examinations. Aided by their snappy phone number, they are internationally recognized and have had their share of high-profile clients. The business is owned and run by Vidal Herrera, a retired CSI investigator with 40 years experience in forensics. We average about four to 500 cases a year consistently for the past 26 years. In the United States, Autopsies are not routinely performed unless the cause of death is in doubt. Families come to me because they're desperate. They need closure, but more importantly, they need answers. If a family dispute the official cause of death, they can pay between $3,500 and $10,000 for a private autopsy to be performed. And with his constant workload, Vidal's business is booming. Death has been good to me. It made me it sustains me because it, it has allowed me to make an income I would never have dreamed possible. And it motivates me to continue always finding the truth and answer for families. Yeah, hey, Eunice, Vicky, 100 autopsy. Managing the business is Vidal's wife, Vicky. The type of cases that we get can range from a heart attack to a hanging to a drug overdose. It's different every day. The body will tell us what happened. Believe me, yeah. The most difficult part of my job is having to deal with death on a day-to-day -day basis. But on the other hand, you get a lot of satisfaction with helping that person through probably one of the worst times of their life. Over in the lab, Vidal has established a regular group of professionals to help him perform the post-mortem examinations. Most senior is experienced forensic pathologist, Dr. Howard Oliver who has worked with 1-800-AUTOPSY since it was established in 1988. With a unknown cause of death, I'm the person that discovers why that person died. It's all up to me and my assistant to discern what the cause of death was. It was simple enough, wasn't it? My role at 1-800-AUTOPSY is, is multifold. I supervise all the autopsies, I manage all the materials, anything that we need to perform our autopsies, as well as perform all the autopsies, mostly myself with the doctors. I've been in death care for 20 years, I've been an embalmer for 10 years before I even came here, so I've been exposed to autopsy bodies. However, performing the autopsy myself was a very new and challenging and different thing than what I'd been doing previously. The uh, heart weight is uh, 240. Primarily came in as an intern to train as an autopsy technician. Assist the pathologists in their dissections and basically anything the doctor needs. Any task he has me do for photography, to dissections, to suture, to clean up, I do it all. Working in such close proximity to death, the team share a dark sense of humor. No, oh, whenever Edder was late, 
we'd make him wear the pink scrubs during the autopsy. As his punishment, he'd wear them too. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a big family as far as what goes on in the actual lab where the guys are. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with death, so you kind of have to treat him like your family because you're with him every day. When I smell this plastic, <laughs> it reminds me of the embalming fluid. Yeah, amazing. But while the mood may be light and relaxed during break time, once lunch is over, it's back to business. Today's case is on a decedent who is a 24-year-old female who allegedly committed uh, suicide. Morgan Cleary was a student from Palmdale, California, where she lived with her family. I remember taking this picture, just Momo being Momo. She was full of life and laughter, made everybody laugh. She was the life of the party that night. She was. <laughs> she wanted to be a barber. She had dreams of opening her own barber shop. Morgan was a gentle soul. But on the evening of August the 2nd, 2014, Teresa would face every parent's worst nightmare. Her daughter didn't return home. The night that it happened, we went looking for her and we couldn't find her. The next morning, when the family woke up, they were alarmed to find that Morgan was still missing. In desperation, they tried to locate her using the GPS on her phone. It showed that she was nearby. As I was running down these train tracks, I was screaming her name and just hoping that she would just come up and just be like, I'm here, I'm okay, like she normally would. A little bit further down was where I saw my sister's feet hanging. And as I came up around the tree is where I found my sister's body. And this is as far as I came when I saw my sister hanging right there. All I saw was Mariah come running out, crying and talking on the phone, and she wasn't calling me. And I knew that she was calling the police, and I knew something was wrong. And I was beyond devastated. I, my worst nightmare was ever thinking of having to bury one of my kids. Morgan's death was officially ruled a suicide, but the family weren't convinced. No suicide note had been found, and the discovery of a used condom at the scene caused Teresa to fear that her daughter may have been sexually assaulted. Visiting Morgan's body at the mortuary gave her further cause for concern. All around her vaginal area and also under her breasts had horrible markings that almost appeared as if they were ligature marks. I had asked what they were and the girl working at the mortuary said she had no idea. Teresa returned to the authorities to demand a further investigation. We had so many questions what could have happened to her. They just closed this case and it was so insensitive and so cold and I just felt like she deserved to have an autopsy to make sure of any other possibilities. And somebody did this to her, we want answers. We're gonna pursue this because we love her enough to find justice. For the state, Morgan's was an open and closed case, obviously a suicide. But as no autopsy had been performed, Teresa felt that she had to take matters into her own hands. She called 
1-800 autopsy. And Sammy, let's get our PPE. Dr. Oliver's almost ready. These families come to us when they have nowhere else to go. Hospitals, medical examiners, coroner's offices won't help these people. We are giving them answers that they need to satisfy themselves. Ready? Autopsy itself in Latin means to see for oneself. And to uh, really determine cause of death, you need to actually get in there and, in a sense, get your hands dirty and uh, go in there and see what's going on. When I'm doing an autopsy, I simply look for something out of the ordinary. If it's suicide by hanging, that's a good result. If the result is some other reason, again, that's a good result. My good results is simply to figure out what the cause of death is. Go ahead and roll her into the morgue, please. Most people see death as something on TV. A nice old lady dying quietly in the hospital, and death is not like that. It's violent, it's ugly, and it's nasty. And to be able to deal with that every day takes a certain type of people. One, two, three. Well done. We treat and we prepare every case as though it's a homicide. We have to document by photographing, videoing, sometimes even x-raying because a doctor has to be prepared to defend his or her findings in the court of law. 185. Eyes are brown. She appears to have all her teeth. Okay, Sammy, we do full frontal body shot for many reasons. Okay. We want to show, first of all, any injuries, traumas, post-mortem, anti-mortem marks, anything, but mostly we want ID, yes. full body identification. Yes. And take photographs regionally and sectionally of the body. Right medial, calcaneal, control car buttons too. She does have some post-mortem artifacts. She's got some interesting abrasions on her right shoulder. We're gonna have to point that out to Dr. Oliver, certainly. Sean has found evidence on the body that warrants further investigation. With the documentation process complete, it's time for the autopsy to begin. Hey, Dr. Oliver, we are ready for your grand entrance, sir. It's about time. <laughs> you trained us well. <laughs> okay, we'll be in ready, sir. It's an honor to be able to do an autopsy. I'm one of the few people in the world that can legally do one. Okay, let me show you these abrasions on the back of her right shoulder. Posterior of the deltoid and the scapula. Marks. Here? Yeah. Nice doing. We're all ready to start, Vidal. Yep, we're all set. Initially, when I saw the body right away, uh, I had questions. Was there any foul play? The first thing I looked at was her fingers, her hands. Was she fighting with somebody? Was she defending somebody? So we'll see that when we go inside. If Morgan had been attacked, there should be evidence both of defensive wounds and of other injuries from an assailant. And the next thing we're going to look for when we open the scalp is a subgaleal hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. If somebody hit her in the head before anything was done to her, it would be hidden by the hair, but it would be a bruise inside. This is the chest plate. Before Sean removes it, we're looking for any broken bones or any bruises. The family was curious about these marks. They were alleging that these were possibly bruising. The mother suspected there was foul play. Because this apparent bruising was around her genital area and breasts, the family feared that Morgan was the victim of a sexual assault. One of the key things, the mother, she was kept bringing that up, somebody left a used condom at the scene. And we told her, I said, the medical examiner, police didn't pick that up. We don't know who placed that there. You could have placed that there. Right. So as far as we're concerned, that's really of no use to us. Right. That sort of thing would have to be picked up by an uh, investigator as evidence. We're, that's, we're not qualified to do that. While the condom itself doesn't influence their findings, they are able to examine Morgan's body for evidence of sexual activity. Yeah, before I remove her uterus. Okay, very good. All right. So the bruising would be on the inner leg. 
lips or the yeah. outer? Outer, generally outer labia. You see them on the inner too. Finally, the team must address the biggest question of all. Did Morgan actually take her own life, or was she the victim of murder? Very rare does a woman hang herself. So again, it was interesting she's so young. This is the first one in 30 years I've ever seen. The wire, they removed the insulation to expose copper wire to put it. So obviously, this individual planned it. Right. But this planning could apply to homicide or suicide. I've seen dozens of suicides by hanging. I know what hallmarks to look for. The key to understanding how Morgan died is the examination of the ligature marks on her neck. It's uh, about an inch. Where the ligature started, and then as she, as she began to suspend, it goes up. Okay, Sammy, take the photograph. After just over two hours of intensive examination, the autopsy is complete. All right, Sammy, let's go ahead and put her in the cooler. Another uh, thorough, complete case. I'm going to share the findings with the mother, hopefully this afternoon. It's a sad case. Yeah, the family wants to know anything that I can help you with, just give me a call. Okay. When I entered the death care industry as a deputy medical investigator, I took an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States, the people in the state of California, and I never forgot that oath. So when I started a business, I developed my philosophy. The deceased must be protected and given a voice because without a witness, they will be forgotten. They will slip through the cracks and we're here to help. For Teresa, the deceased's mother, who is waiting anxiously at home, the results can't come soon enough. I'm hoping that the answers to this autopsy will give us closure and help us move on because this hurts so bad. I never thought I could feel anything so painful. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking about that family, the mother. The look on her face, you know, her eyes begin to glass up and the tears start coming down. They hold, they try to hold it in, but with women, they just let it out. It's, 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 it's heart-wrenching at times. Hi. Hi. Yours, for me, it hit a nerve because mm -hmm. your daughter is so young. Right. And it's very rare that a female will either hang themselves or use a weapon. Uh -huh. We examined her body. Uh -huh. We looked at her to see if there was any defense wounds. First thing we looked at are the fingernails, mm -hmm. any scratches, and there wasn't. She didn't have any lacerations to her scalp. We're looking for any broken bones or any bruises. And what you saw in her body, which would appear to be uh, bruising and stuff. I was curious about these marks. The mother suspected there was foul play. It was actually N6 infestation. Uh, she was slightly decomposed because she was outside for a while. Okay. But one of the key things, the, the mother, she was kept bringing that up, somebody left a used condom at the scene. Number one, there was no uh, sexual activity. Okay. Uh, when we examined her, her body was already clean. Okay. Okay. My main concern is there was no ligature marks on the back, only the front, and so that raised my suspicions as well. Well, what happens, people are unaware about ligature marks. Uh -huh. You know, when they watch TV, uh -huh. they go from behind, they choke them. Mm -hmm. That is a straightforward homicide or murder. The wire, they removed the insulation to expose copper wire to put it, so obviously this individual planned it. Based on what we saw, the weight of her body as she began to go down, uh -huh. be slightly suspended, the ligature mark went up. Uh -huh. It went up and the knot was there where the cable was. Okay. Her weight is what killed her, of course. went up, and that's what cut off her oxygen. Morgan's body had no defensive wounds. 
there was no evidence of sexual assault. The apparent bruises were caused by insects. The position of the knot and the ligature marks all point to one conclusion. It was a straightforward suicide. Of course, it doesn't feel good. I'm glad to know. She died within seconds. So she, she, she did not suffer. When she placed the ligature around her, there was a cutoff of oxygen, and probably within four seconds, she became unconscious. She didn't feel what was happening, so she actually died peacefully. I know it's a suicide, it's tragic, but she did not suffer. Okay, I'm glad that we have a final answer. give you some closure. Yes, because, uh, it does, and I just needed to be sure. I, as her mom, I just needed to know. coming. At the moment, moving on seems impossible, but hopefully soon our good memories and laughter will outweigh our pain. I know that my family and I will heal. However uncomfortable the truth might be, Teresa and her family now have the answers they wanted. The worst is obviously uh, experiencing deaths like this on a daily basis, speaking to families, uh, the heartache they uh, go through. But you have to put your feelings aside because death is a reality of life and uh, it never stops. Now the family puts some closure to uh, the sad death of their daughter. Come in, uh, where'd you come from? But for Vidal and his team, it's on to the next case. Another mystery to solve. Another grieving family's questions to answer. <laughs>